So we have Har here again to graft uh, Atomoya. Uh, in this case, uh, we have leafy green uh, graft wood, and this variety happens to be the uh, 97.1 Murray uh, Atomoya. And so he's going to show us how to do that. And this uh, particular type of grafting uh, does not have to, I mean, you, you can graft Atomoya and not have the, the um, scions dormant. Uh, so this is a whole different way of grafting Atomoya. Usually during the hot weather times of year, we do not have good uh, dormant graft wood uh, to work with, such as we would use in late winter or spring. When we want to graft Atemoyas and other Anonas during the hot time of year, uh, the grafts really work much better. They live better and grow sooner if they're grafted with the leaves still on the science. Now we'll do a modified veneer graft way down here. So we'll take most of this weight off the top of the tree but still leave a nice number of leaves. And it's inconvenient to have a leaf right at the bottom. So, and we don't use whole leaves. We use about a third of a leaf. So you want a nice sharp needle nose pliers. I mean uh, clippers that you can use like scissors. Scissors would work too. So there we have our three buds. And these go back in the bag that had a little water put in there and shaken so that the leaves and inside of the bag would all be wet. And one must keep that in the shade. I'm going to use a traditional straight edge grafting knife. I'm sanitizing it so I'm not bringing any pathogens from another work site. That was hydrogen peroxide and now 91% alcohol. I should have done that a little bit ago to let it sit. Oh, I, I should use, I mean, I should show these different rubber bands. These are actually more available now than the ones that I've had around for years. These pink ones were made in China and the supply chain is messed up now. These blue ones are from Germany. They're a little thicker. I hear they last much longer, can actually be reused. Okay, my knife is, should be healthy now. don't want to go as low as I could. If this graft doesn't live, we can put another one lower down later. And this is a good height anyway. So the safety procedure with this is different. Uh, I do need to steady the plant so I do need my other hand there 
and I usually grab the tip of the knife and help steady with the thumb of the knife holding hand and it helps to start with the knife at an angle and slide it because it cuts easier when it's sliding and it would cut even easier if I had sharpened this just before I started using it. I'm having to cut more than once which normally I shouldn't have to do. It is a bit dull. And I'll slice off this bud right here. And these just above. Just a light slicing of these others. I don't want to injure the wood below where the graft's going in, but we do want to slow those buds from starting to grow. I didn't dig, dig in deep enough to actually kill them below the bud. Here above the graft, I can dig in deep enough to kill those buds of the rootstock that we don't want to be competing with a graft. Feel sharp. Okay. Safety procedure here. I have my thumb on the opposite side of the graft wood. And most of the movement is of the graft wood away. I'm basically holding my hand with a knife almost still. And if it did slip, my wrist would hit my chest. And the curved thumb also is going behind the blade there. I have cut two fingers all the way to the bone doing another type of grafting but I have not injured myself so far doing this type. So we have a very unequal wedge short on this side and long on this side Well, I think I have bragging rights on that one. It fit very nicely. There are several different types of rubbers, different sizes. I'll use one of these. Not used to using this kind of rubber, but feels good. It's a little slippery compared to the other that comes with powder. This one doesn't seem to have powder on it. Feels a little oily. Okay, here where I cut the base of the leaf off, when that remaining piece of the petiole, the base of the leaf falls off, there will be a bud there. And of course there are three buds here under the base of the leaves. The buds normally will not grow until the leaf has fallen off. Now we don't want this leaf sitting around in the wind for a long time. This spray is optional, usually have not used it, but I think things go a little better 
when we use this mild organically approved fungicide. We don't want that in our eyes. The wind's blowing this way so I'm not getting it on me. Anyone knows that soap doesn't feel good in one's eyes and copper is not good to get in one's eyes either. Now the mini greenhouse. If we don't do this, that graft will not live because those leaves will not only dry out themselves, but they'll dry out the graft wood. We don't put the bag on straight sided like that. The moisture that's evaporating from the ground and even more so the moisture that's coming out of the leaves that we say is transpiring. We could say sweating out of the leaves. Within half an hour or so will make the atmosphere inside this bag 100 percent humid. And the humidity, especially when the temperature is cooler outside the bag, uh, will gather on the inside of the bag. So much so that you'll hardly be able to see the plant unless you shake the bag a little bit to make the water fall down so you can peek inside. When the sides of the bag are straight like this, that uh, condensation running down is going to run mostly outside the pot and with, within a few days the soil will be dried out and your graft can, can die. So you want to make a waste, a better waste than I have, uh, here in the bag so that when the condensation goes down, when it gets to the curve there at the base of the waste, it will drip into the soil. And that way no irrigation is needed for a month or more. This may not be in full sun, not even for half an hour. Uh, we normally put it under about 70 percent shade. Uh, usually we accomplish that by using two layers of 30 to 35 percent shade cloth. One layer that's removable and one layer that's at the top of the shade house permanently. If you don't have a shade house then you put this under a tree and you have to make sure that uh, full sun is not on it at any time. When we use leafy scions with atemoyas and other anonas the bag is left on for about three weeks and then we remove the bag and usually hose it down at that time uh, to uh, reduce the shock of going from 100 percent humidity to uh, normal daytime humidity. Uh, if you have a, a choice uh, to do it towards evening, that's a good thing, and that way the plant has overnight to adapt to not being in the 100 percent humidity. Yeah, poking holes in the bag after three weeks and leaving the bag on for another week, that is also an option for transitioning the plant, but uh, it can, leaving it longer than needed, does increase the chance of getting fungus infection going on the graft around the base of the tree that you want to stay healthy. Yeah, the traditional way to graft anonas has been with dormant scions, but that only works really well in very late winter and very early spring. In other words, when the sap is rising for the buds to break, to start growing, that's when the dormant grafting works very well. At any other times of year, when you graft with dormant graft wood, uh, the chances of the graft taking is usually less than 50 percent. 
which is what we're expecting from these graphs today. I would expect less than 50% of them to live. In, in the summer, it's so much better uh, to graft with the leaves, uh, with some leaf left on the scion uh, because they are photosynthesizing and they are demanding sap movement from the rootstock into the scion wood. When you don't have leaves there transpiring and providing that vacuum pull on the sap, uh, the healing is much less likely to occur. So nowadays most of us who know how to do this graft our anonas in the summer with leafy scions. But if someone else sends you some graft wood from somewhere else, they won't be sending it with leaves on. So you do need to know how to do uh, the leafless uh, scion wood or dormant uh, graft wood uh, scions. Well, thanks very much, Har. Uh, added this to the Anona, all the Anona information that you've already put out. I know that there are a lot of people who appreciate, uh, you know, learning from you. And so, uh, you know, who better to show the two different kinds of grafting Anonas? Thanks.